This is the day when we began the journey of combining AudioKit, an open source framework you can use to make music apps with the Game Boy Advance. And why would we want to do that? Well, we can make music, Game Boy music, on our iPhone, our iPads, or even Macs. AudioKit is a great way to begin your journey in music app development. And it's a valuable skill because in these days, many producers are starting to adopt the mobile music production platform. And why not start to learn how to, how to develop in that? Another thing that's great about this is we can turn retro technology into newer technology by using that technology. So I could use my, my iPhone and send MIDI signals to change the parameters of this device and create new expressions with that, expressions this thing never would have been able to do. But I hope you guys stay until the end of the video. It's gonna be a long one, but we're gonna get a head start on this project. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy. So let's break the problem down. Here's our iPhone. These are our buttons doing our finger drumming. So we need some way to load our sound and map it into each of those buttons. So each button plays a different sound. And we also need a system to communicate which sounds are being played. We're gonna use MIDI, Musical Instrument Digital Interface, to do that. And AudioKit provides an easy way to do both of these things. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is go to audiokit.io. This is the official AudioKit website. Then we can go to download. And what I like to do to get the latest version of AudioKit is clone the repository on GitHub. So you can actually go to this application terminal and it'll just paste in this. First, go to whatever folder you wanna put your AudioKit in and then just paste that command and it will actually download the the GitHub repository. So that's the latest version, probably the best idea, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> okay, now we can go to the AudioKit Frameworks folder, which is inside our downloads. So now we're in the Frameworks, and there's instructions on how we can start building the framework. So you just set the platforms variable, and we're just gonna build it for iOS. Be kind of a waste of time to build it for the other ones since we're not gonna have our app on those so you can just run the build frameworks script and that's going to execute that and while that's working you should also have a Apple developer account if you don't already and you can sign up for one for free the only reason that it will cost money is if you're planning on publishing apps to the App Store then it will be $99 a year I know kind of expensive that's why I canceled mine a while ago because I'm not going to be using it, so why pay the money? But if you want to just make apps, you can just use Xcode and anybody can do that for free. So you can download Xcode once you got your developer account, whether it's free or paid. And we can go ahead and create a new Xcode project. We're just going to create a template document-based app that's going to save us a lot of time. And I'm going to name this Game Boy MIDI Player. All right. And then this right here is your package identifier so that each app in the App Store has a unique one or each app on a device has a unique one. So you just, I just set mine to com.evanmurray or whatever your name is. And I leave it at that. And then it will auto fill it for me based on the app name. And I would leave the Git repository unchecked unless you know how to use GitHub. I don't know why I just leave mine checked. I'm just going to ignore this because it's saying I don't have a GitHub author, but I'm, yeah, I'm not using GitHub right now. But anyway, this is our document app. So now if we want to load MIDI files into this app, we just got to define that type of file. So we just add a uniform type identifier and that will be able to load MIDI files then. So we just type MIDI and then public audio, MIDI audio. And that's our identifier just like that. And then we also want to add the type properties. One is LS handler rank. And this is going to be alternate.
All right, and after we do that, now we can go to the document browser view controller, or we can actually build it and see how it's going to work. Basically, it's just going to open up a document. We can open up MIDI files with it, so we can go ahead and run this on an iPhone. That's one of the coolest parts of Xcode is you can use the simulator. So first I'm gonna, once the simulator opens up, I'm gonna go to bitmidi.com and I'm gonna go ahead and download a MIDI file. And once this thing, we can just click download, it's gonna ask us if we wanna download it just like it would on your laptop. And then you have that little downloads tab there and once it's downloaded, you just click on it click on that share icon thingy. It will take a little couple seconds maybe. And then you can open it in the app that we just made, which is awesome. And it won't do much. It takes a while to load. It will just say what the file name is, but it's actually in the app, even though it just says the name. It's because we have to program it to do something else. So I'm gonna go ahead, go to the storyboard, go to that and just go ahead and delete all of this stuff. Storyboard is gonna be your friend because it's like the visual part of your app making. So you get to see where your code actually connects to all these visual things. And right now I'm just changing that done button. I'm changing it to a folder icon because that's gonna make more sense in our app. And to change the color of that button, you can actually change the tint color of the of the view controller. So I'm gonna make it some kind of gray color, I guess, for now, because that looks nice in this background, but later we'll end up changing that probably. And yeah, it's kind of weird because it's in a stack view, so that's why it wasn't letting me resize it. But once we drag it out of that stack view, it's gonna be fine. And I'm just gonna go ahead and delete these because we don't need those. All right, so we got our document view controller. Now I'm gonna go to its name and I'm actually gonna change that ID, which is gonna matter, name it view controller. And I'm gonna change the class name to view controller as well. But that means we have to create a view controller class so we can try and rename this file, but it's not going to let us rename it for some reason, don't know why. So to save it, save some time, I'm just gonna delete this thing move it to the trash, and then I'm gonna create a new file, which is gonna be our new view controller file. So this is kind of where you're connecting the code with that storyboard, like I said, which is kind of cool to do. But yeah, I'm just gonna drag this out of the trash because I can't open it now. So I'm gonna go inside of there, copy everything inside by holding Command A, and then Command C, and then Command V to paste it inside of the the view controller file we just created. Now we can get rid of that old one. And yeah, we click that plus, that's gonna open up a dual window kind of setup. So this way we can we can interact with our storyboard. I'm just gonna delete that because we don't need that. But yeah, we can see our storyboard here and we can actually drag this button to that function. So when we tap on this button, it's gonna launch that, wait a minute, why is our error here? Oh, okay, so where you see if success and then else, that's what happens if our document opens. So if, if we can successfully open it, we're gonna run some code or else we're gonna print this error like, oh, our document couldn't load. So that's what that does. Just kind of handles it in not a very good way, I guess. It tells us what went wrong, so that's all right. So by holding down control, that's how you can, if you hold down control and then drag the button to the IB action. That's how you can connect the two. It's not working. I'm gonna try deleting that. It was already attached to something that didn't exist. But yeah, it's still not working. It's like, eh, we're trying to poke it. It's not working. All right, ah, it's not working. We gotta rename the class, that's why. So once we name it view controller, then it's going to let us because we have it matched up now. So yeah, just kind of nice there. Apple's really neat and clean. It's just like kind of using their iPhone, you know? Same way coding. I don't know, that's just my thought process. But yeah, now it's not working because like I said, in this document, 
browser view controller dot swift we got to change that id so that's at that bottom function present document we got to change that id and also it's saying that document view controller yeah that doesn't exist now it's just view controller because we renamed it so that's how that works all right build succeeded that's what i like to see so yeah we got this sigabart sigabart <laughs> Kind of a funny word. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to look this up. You can see what goes on in the console. And so usually if you just look it up, you'll find something and it's like, oh, I recognize this. So we just have to change the module so it says current app. So go back to the storyboard, click on that view again. And if we go to its info, we can see it doesn't have a module. Oh, so we just type our, wait a minute, you can just select the app right there. And there we go, now it's our app name, so now it should work. It takes a while sometimes, so don't freak out. Also, you might get this white screen for a while. Don't freak out again, it's just the app loading, but yeah, once you see the actual view, then it's all good. So yeah, now we can try clicking this, and yay, it loads our view, and we can dismiss it just like that, pretty nice. So now I'm actually going to change the background color, because I said I was going to change it probably, and also we're going to have to change that tint, because I'm going to make it white. So that way we got a white folder icon, black background. So yeah, some of these will actually sync up to whether you have dark mode enabled or not. I think the system ones, but this will just stay black because we just selected black. But yeah, some of the system ones, it will, it will kind of match the device, which I think is kind of cool. So yeah, we got it set up. So now what we can do is add a view and these views are gonna act as our buttons. So no, we're not using UI buttons here because these are gonna be special type of buttons that inherit from a UI view. So we're just gonna put that as the placeholder for now. They're actually gonna be audio kit style buttons from audio kit. So that's why we're doing it this way. And you can also use that ruler icon to resize it. And whoops, that's the position. I don't think we wanna do that. I mean, I guess we can leave it there. And then the width and the height are just going to be 60 because I want it to be squares. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. So I'm just going to give that one a name, button 49. And I'm going to make a couple of these, I guess more than a couple. Yeah, that's a lot of buttons. And I think there's 83 of them. Yeah, no, wait, there might be 81. We'll see. So yeah, basically just rename all of them. And you can skip to see how many buttons I actually created. I think it was either 83 or 81. Yeah, so some of those buttons I'm going to end up deleting a little bit later. But for now, just go with it. Yeah, so we got a bunch of buttons now. But now we want to make them kind of a grid. So how we do that, we can go ahead and position this one. This is button 49. So if you click on it, you can see it just selects that button. So we'll click on it, position it where we want it to be. Usually I like picking an even number because it's easier to add up in my head. So I'll do Y as 80 and then X as 15. Should work. Yeah, so that's looking pretty good. So now if we go to the next one, we want to position it right next to it. So you can see it's touching it, but I want a little bit of space, so I'm going to make it 80. And yeah, that's looking pretty nice. So we're going to make a whole line of these guys. And yeah, just like that, you just kind of add up the position. You know, each of them are 60 pixels in width. So think about it. You got to add 65, I think, to get that little, you know, five pixel space in between. So that's how they're all spaced out. And yeah, just it's kind of a pattern. You get used to it when you start creating all of them. And it just kind of gets easier to organize all of them as you go on. So yeah, now we got all the buttons. Sweet. Well, not all of them yet. We still got a long ways to go. 
This is why this video is like 16 minutes long. But yeah, that's what it's going to look like in the end after doing all the math and adding them up. <laughs> Adam, adding them up. And yeah, I'm just going to delete those four, like I said. But there's kind of a problem here. I messed up a little bit. One of these buttons is actually not supposed to be here or something, or it's in the wrong place. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and delete that one probably. Yeah, so we're just trying to find it here. It's kind of tricky. I think this might, yeah, 63, that was the... That was the button in the middle there. That wasn't supposed to be there. So now we got a problem. We got 62, then it goes to 64. We want them to all be, you know, contiguous, like incrementing by one because it is going to matter later. We'll see why, but yeah, we all want them. So I think it was like, if we scroll down all the way, I think it goes up to like 83 or something. And also you'll notice that kind of, I don't know what to call it, icon. It's right next to the rectangle. If you go to that tab, you can see the tags. Set all of the, all of the tags so they match the button number. That is going to matter. Oh yeah, so we made 83 of these. So yeah, now we can select all of these and kind of reposition it to match exactly what we want. So I'm just kind of making things neat here, making it look nice. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. Maybe move the folder around a little bit. Yeah, I know. I started this at like 7, what was it, 7 a.m.? And now it's like 8.30. It's crazy. I can't believe this took an hour and a half to position all of these. But yeah, so now we can actually... Go to the audio kit downloads. It, it's actually there because we downloaded it, remember, so that's why it's there. And we can go into the frameworks iOS and drag those two frameworks in there. You want to make sure copy of copy items. You want to do that because what will happen is if you delete them later in that old directory, Xcode will be missing them. But if you copy them, it will go into your project folder, so it will all be there. So yeah, now we can, now what we'll do is we'll actually, these buttons, we'll change the class of them using that rectangle tab thingy, like kind of looks like a newspaper headline or something, I don't know, but we can actually rename all of these, so AK button and audio kit UI, and just do that for all of the buttons, and yeah, once we do that, we can check back in in the next video, this has kind of been a long one, sorry about that, but Lots of boring setup stuff. I'm going to leave this project in the GitHub so you guys don't have to go through this setup if you want. But I just wanted to have it there just in case you guys wanted to know how I did this. But yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure to leave a like and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.